Have you heard about the new CML2 from Cisco? Well, I'm Ronnie Wong, and I want to show you how to actually get it installed and get a lab up and running as soon as you can. So this is the way it's actually happening, right? The very fact is with Cisco certifications, you're actually going to end up seeing that lab work is going to be very important to you. You can buy physical equipment. There's other simulators that are out there, but the new CML2 makes it much easier. Let me show you what we're talking about here. So on my screen, once you actually get the, the account that you actually need, right, you'll go and purchase it for about $199 US. You actually end up seeing that at this point, there's going to be two different licenses. You'll need this Cisco 2.0 license right here. From that point, you'll need to, well, download it. So if I go to my account again, and then I, oh, I actually just select download. And on the download in the software section, there's two files that you need. So you're going to latest releases and what you're looking for and what you need to download are both these. Do not be fooled by downloading just one, but go and download both of them. For the sake of time, I've gone ahead and done that. Now, with this particular version of the Cisco modeling labs, you actually also, of course, need virtualization platform to be running. And I'm going to be using VM Fusion to help us. It will run in VMware Fusion, but it will also, of course, run in VMware Workstation and even ESXi. So we're actually going to use Fusion in our demonstration here. All right, so now that I've got that downloaded, let's go ahead and we will start installing right here on VMware Fusion. So I'm going to click on the plus sign and I want to create a new VM. And because of the way that this works, we're not going to install from a disk or image, but we're going to be using this option to import from an existing virtual machine. So I'll select that and click continue. At this point, you'll see where I've also gone ahead and made sure this is already appearing right here for us. So I'll choose that ticker file. Let me verify that I actually did choose that right file. Yep. So it's the one that actually ends in the OVA. Then we'll click continue. And from here, it's going to ask me for a name. I'm just going to call this CML2 and click Save. Now, normally in previous virtual machines, this might have actually taken a lot more time and it's not as intuitive as the way we're actually going to see when we get it up and launched and ready to go. Now, when we finish, it's going to say, hey, look, I want to go ahead and get this thing started. We don't want the virtual machine to start up right away. There's a couple of settings we need to make sure is actually in place. So I'm going to click Finish. And now it's going to ask about upgrading. We're not going to upgrade at this point because I'm not exactly sure what that does for us. So I'm going to select don't upgrade. And there it goes. It's trying to start right away. I'm going to click on the virtual machine and shut it down because I don't want it to start because I want to go through a couple of the different configurations. Click on my wrench. On the network adapter, you want to actually check whether or not it actually is going to uh, connect here the way that you want to. I'm going to leave mine at auto detect or share with my Mac one of those two. I want it to be on the same network that my laptop's currently on, so I'm not going to know until it actually boots up at this point, but usually that uh, auto-detect is enough for us, so that's fine. And it's already pre-configured with enough RAM that it actually needs to at least get up and running, so we don't really have to adjust anything else, but there is one more thing that we need to do. The second file that we downloaded, we need to get that attached because it's an ISO. I'm going to click on the CD. We're going to connect the drive itself. We're going to choose a disk image. And there's that second file that's the .iso. Click open. And that's all it actually needs to begin up and running. Now I'm not going to upgrade. We're just going to let it actually start. And it's going to begin the installation process. Now, unlike the previous edition of the Cisco Viral License, which is the 1.0 edition of this, this one's going to require us to create two different passwords and two different usernames as well. One's going to actually be, of course, like the system-wide administrator for everything that actually has to be done in the background in terms of maintenance. And then the other one's going to be used, of course, to actually be able to connect you to, well, the Viral itself or the CML itself. I'm still using the old name so that you can get started and build a lab very quickly. Now, whatever it asks you to do, you're probably going to need to do if you want to be able to connect to it from across the network. 
It's also saying it's going to, oop, let me see if I can type in my correct password. And then the navigation features here are a little bit strange. Let me zoom out so that we can see that. And then zoom back in. It's going to ask about the EULA. I have to do a shift to accept the EULA. And this is where it's saying, hey, you need to connect and create these two different accounts here. A privileged Linux uh, system user account and the first admin uh, controller user as well. I'm going to click continue. And you have to navigate this through using the control N for control next on the fields or control pre or control P, excuse me, for the previous. So a little bit funky in the navigation as you first start here. We'll click continue. There's two different licensings. I've only got the Cisco CML for personal. I do not have the enterprise. That's fine. And now this is where you actually create your first uh, account as well. So I need a control N for the next. And I'm going to actually create my password. Oops. And then if I need to get back into it, I need a tab and then control N again to verify. So that's the first administration password that we actually need. Click continue and it's going to say, hey, you didn't use a strong password for the purpose of this demonstration. Continue anyways. Now for the second one, I did the tab again, tab, and then control N. Told you a little bit tricky for me here. Just typing in my super secret password there and click continue. Now it's asking, hey, which one do you want to do? You want to set up a static or a DHCP? We're going to leave it at DHCP and then click continue. Now it's going to ask me to confirm and it will go ahead and just start building the virtual machine that needs to. Now in the previous edition of this in the viral 1.6 or even earlier, you had to use something that we called the VM Maestro, which was just another application, of course, to connect to the server that we're in. But now with the CML2, you only need, well, a web browser to be able to connect in to do everything that you need to do. All right, so here's the IP address that we would just need to type into a browser. And if we're on the same network, it will allow us to connect directly in and then we'll be up and ready to go. Now, I've already registered my key to a different uh, CML here. So let's go ahead and check that one out instead. I need to change networks back over to IT Pro TV. I'll come over here to the browser, 10.0.101. So here's what it actually ends up looking like, okay? So it's the same type of connection. Let me add a lab. At the very beginning, the very first time, you actually see where it tells you that there's some system problem and it's simply asking you for the registration or you will not be able to create a, a lab for yourself. So here's our blank lab and I'll click on that. And here's what is called the CML Workbench. Now this CML Workbench allows me to, well, create a basic lab. So we're just gonna click here, drag one over, and we'll click on another router. And I know those things look kinda tiny, don't they? Well, the great thing is you have a plus symbol here that you can actually make them look a tad bit larger. I'm not gonna say that they're the most gigantic thing in the world. And if I want to connect them together, there's this ring and up at the top, there's a link. And so I just click and I drag that right over on top of the other router. Now I can choose which one we can connect to. If you notice like in the old viral, for those of you that's used it, that was kind of one of the things you had to kind of turn on. This one is on by default in that way. So now that both of those routers are connected, I can then select to start my lab. And when you start the lab, a little bit faint here, but you can end up seeing where it's beginning to start. And now you'll see kind of this ring has expanded a little bit more. There's a stop. Here's how you directly console into it. So you click on that. And then down at the bottom, there's something that says open the console. And I'll show you what the console ends up looking like as well. So it's still booting up. It's gonna take just a few minutes. This will actually turn into like a green dot as you actually end up seeing it once everything is actually up and going. 
But that's pretty much as simple as it actually gets to being able to install to the point of getting access, of course, to the management console itself that we need. And then to actually being able to build a lab fairly quick by comparison. And here it is as I zoom in so that we can see a little bit better. It is booting up and it actually even includes a newer version of, of course, this iOS V that we actually have right here in the system uh, viral uh, itself. And this comes pre-configured. Now, a couple of other pieces that are actually fairly unique. If I want to edit the config, currently it's locked at this point because it's still booting up, but it will actually display the configuration information right here of everything that you've done. You can also, of course, see the interfaces that you're connected to and all the interfaces that are actually out there for us. And there's the green dots that I was talking about with a check mark in them. So if I select that node, I can go down to console here. And now let me see if I can zoom in a little bit easier so that we can see it. So now it's asking me for the direct configuration. I can say no. And there we are, we are off and running. And now those two machines will be connected together just like we would in the original viral, or even if we actually had physical equipment as well, just in the same way as you're actually seeing right here. So in just a moment, we should see and that actually return. There's not a ton of interfaces here, so we should be coming up uh, fairly soon. So that's how we can get started here in terms of that. And we'll just verify that this is actually working just a little bit in a moment. Now on the other side, it's the same thing. So I can go to the console. Oops, kind of selected that and dragged it down there. That's fine. Let me select that node again. And over on this side, press enter, say no. And we simply can go back and forth just like that. So we're not going to do a ton of configuration. So once we do that, I can do a show run, oop, show run, how not snow run, show run. And there it is. So there is the basic router, basic lab that we can actually build using the Cisco CML2, which is now going to replace and probably become your favorite tool because of how much more intuitive it is compared to the previous versions of this. So when you think about considering here of building your own lab, whether to invest heavy amounts of or heavy amounts, lots of actually amounts of money in building maybe a physical lab, or maybe spending a little bit of more money or maybe a little bit less money and getting the Cisco viral, you'll be able to actually add up to 20 different nodes here, including of course, their layer two switching module that will actually help you out too. Well, that should be a good first look of how we could actually get it installed, as well as how we got a lab up and running fairly quickly and get access to it too. So take some time, Take a look at it. I think it's gonna be worth your time and effort as you actually move forward in your Cisco certifications. Make sure you check out our playlist for more Cisco tips and tricks. And don't forget, also subscribe to our channel. I'm Ronnie Wong and thank you for watching.